In this Wrestle Talk news, the AEW locker room wants CM Punk gone, and maybe WWE don't want him either. Britt Baker and Thunder Rosa heat, the latest on Sasha Banks does Japan, and more. Subscribe and enable notifications to always on for daily wrestling news videos. Support Wrestle Talk! After over six weeks of AEW television with nobody saying anything on screen about your favourite beloved top stars CM Punk, Kenny Omega, The Young Bucks and Brandon Cutler and how they're no longer around like it's Sunday dinners round your mum's house and her partner Steve just isn't there anymore even though he's been there every Sunday since February and you want to ask why isn't he there because he kind of likes Steve he was a funny bloke but you also know something has clearly gone wrong you don't want to cause a scene so you just talk about how nice the roast potatoes are Ollie just focus on the roast potatoes or something like that, the situation finally appears to be working itself out. Following the post All Out Media scrum brawl, CM Punk's close personal friend Ace Steel has reportedly been released from the promotion, and last Friday's Wrestling Observer newsletter revealed that AEW is currently negotiating a buyout of Punk's contract, strongly implying they really are parting ways. And going by Wade Keller's recent radio show, that's for the best. As why it's true, yes, everybody loves the acclaimed, most people people hate CM Punk. Keller asked his AEW sources how a vote would go in the promotion's locker room over whether they wanted Punk to return. One person said he wouldn't fare very well. Another person said he thinks he might not get a single vote. And someone else says he doesn't think he'd get many votes. Keller did note that he would expect Punk to get some votes based on conversations he's had with other AEW stars over the last six weeks, who are obviously on Punk's side. But the three people he spoke to here were prominent people of influence in that locker room, whose opinions obviously hold a lot more sway. The names who are said to have stepped up as locker room leaders during the punk situation have been John Moxley, Brian Danielson, and Chris Jericho. I'm not saying those are the people Keller has spoken to, but coincidentally, Jericho has liked an anti-CM Punk tweet from the account iBlade Daily, which says, you cannot bring punk back without ostracizing the rest of the locker room. He buried them all in public on a night he won the AEW World Championship and sucked the life out of a pay-per-view that cost millions to produce. Let him go to WWE. He's proven he's not the man he says he is already. Then again, Chris Jericho also liked this steamy photo shoot video from WWE Zia Lee right after. He could just be hornily button mashing. The crazy thing about last Friday's Wrestling Observer report, though, wasn't that Punk really might be done with AEW. I think that's the unfortunate inevitability we've all suspected would happen ever since he cut his evil pipe bomb following All Out. It's the negotiating sticking point that's currently holding things up. The reported focus of AEW and Punk's talks have been over the non-compete period that Punk Punk would have following the termination slash buyout of his AEW deal. And why is a non-compete period so essential here? Look around you, friend! We're in a wrestling war! And like we saw with Cody Rhodes, a name at the level of Punk suddenly becoming a free agent would have all the money thrown at him by the other side, no matter how many times Triple H fired him on his wedding day. But then the question becomes, would WWE even want him? Keller points out that Vince McMahon never believed in CM Punk because, of course, we all believe in Joe Hendry. Vince didn't even feel like he really believed in him during Punk's Red Hot main event title run from 2011 to 2013, which is evident in most of the pay-per-views being headlined by John Cena still. McMahon also had an opportunity to bring Punk back to WWE when a door was opened by the Fox Backstage Studio Show, of which Punk was a host. Remember, he changed the culture. Punk even said he'd consider a WWE return around that time for the right-sized bag of money on a Reddit AMA, but Vince reportedly declared backstage at the time, he would never do business with Punk again. But McMahon isn't running WWE anymore that we know of publicly. And while the personal dislike between Punk and Triple H appears to be far more intense than between Punk and Vince, Keller reckons the new regime is more likely to bring Punk back to WWE. As we've seen with his AEW self-combustion though, Punk is a wild card. You might boost your ratings initially, but a public tantrum or divided locker room could ultimately be more trouble than that's worth. 
And according to Keller, this is precisely the opinion of one of Triple H's core people, who is heavily advising not to bring Punk back to WWE. Somebody who's currently in WWE and is within the sphere of influence of Paul Levesque's decision making would be a hard no as of me asking this person today. A hard no on endorsing the return of CM Punk, even if it would help business. I won't go into exactly what was said, but when I asked, I got a long paragraph of one sentence after another of negative comments about how they feel about Punk now compared to 8, 9, 10 years ago based on what's happened in AEW in the last 13 months. I think there would be some pushback by people in Levesque's sphere of influence. Levesque's sphere of influence, title of your next authority style faction. So Punk is managing to divide a well-functioning team already just by being an option up for discussion. It's easy to forget that amidst all the shoot fight craziness, Punk actually tore his triceps in his all-out main event title win over John Moxley. Even if the fight and ensuing investigation never happened, Punk would still be out of action for around six months. This comes following a broken foot injury that forced the interim AEW World Championship situation back in May. Even if a non-compete is agreed, Punk couldn't just show up for a match in WWE the fantasy booking way we all want him to. Being beaten by Goldberg in Saudi Arabia. But hear me out. Punk's injury recovery would be entering its final month at the end of January. With limited spots, he could win the Royal Rumble as a surprise entrant and main event WrestleMania like he always wanted. All it took was ironically becoming everything he hated 10 years ago. And I'm sure that would have zero repercussions for anyone else hoping to win the Rumble coming off an injury and then main eventing WrestleMania. How would you book Punk's WWE return? Let me know in the comments. But you can't blame all of AEW's ills on CM Punk because there's another heat situation that's also still unresolved. In Keller's audio update, he actually said the AEW locker room is not in disarray. There have been numerous sites corroborating this since the fallout brawl. The heat isn't as bad as the headlines make it seem, and Jericho, Moxley and Danielson have helped stabilise the backstage environment. That said, there are still issues. There's Sammy Guevara waking up in the morning and thinking, how can I be controversial today? Andrade trying to leave for WWE, MJF's contract dispute back in May, and also a larger faction feud between what's going on with Britt Baker's camp and Thunder Rosa's camp. The Thunder Rosa Britt Baker thing is not solved. Fightful first reported in August that Rosa had significant heat from other members of the AEW women's roster and that despite having an awesome feud through 2021, Rosa and Britt Baker can't stand each other. Baker has even addressed this on air, accusing Rosa of sandbagging her opponents, which is where you don't help them lift you up for moves, and generally working stiff. Athena sees your stiff accusations and says, hold my coloured contact lenses. Rosa then took time off to heal her back injury. Some say this was necessary, as back issues can become very serious. But Rosa's detractors feel she should have worked through her injury to at least drop the title to Tony Storm as planned. Instead, yet another interim title situation situation was created. Along with Keller reporting the Baker vs Rosa heat isn't solved, last week's Wrestling Observer reported that many of the extras being used in AEW that were close to Rosa haven't been booked as of late. AEW wrestler Captain Sean Dean has denied these reports on Twitter. It's the kind of careless reporting like this causing unnecessary issues and problems for no reason. You have no info, yet still report this dumb BS. All those talented women are in good standing, so whoever brought that to your attention is a liar and a fraud. Hashtag salute. Sasha Banks is, in a way, the CM Punk of women's wrestling right now. A potential free agent that's gone completely silent since her controversial walkout on a company. But last week, following reports her and Naomi had agreed a WWE return deal, she tweeted a fan-made graphic of her versus Kyrie Sane for New Japan's new IWGP Women's Championship belt. Now, continuing the teases that she is nearing some kind of wrestling return, albeit we have no idea to which promotion, Banks has been spotted in Spain training with Barcelona's Lucha Libre promotion. And she also hooked up with Tokyo Joshi Pro wrestler Miyu Yamashita. Do you think we'll see Sasha make her wrestling return this year? And where? Let me know in the comments. But now head over to our other wrestling channel, Parts for Known, to watch Adam Blompier's 10 most hated matches of all time.
Now, there's a rumor going around that I hate wrestling. I'm not exactly sure where this rumor has come from. Maybe from disgruntled wrestling fans projecting their hatred of various products onto me. Maybe from the fact that I seem to put all my time and energy into No Rolls Barred, the best board game YouTube channel in history. Or maybe it's because all those time on live streams where I said I hate wrestling, but I don't.